Welcome, my name is Clayton. I'm one of the tutors at the Natural Sciences Tutoring Center here at Scottsdale Community College. Uh, today we're just going to be covering the material that is expected to be on your first exam for Gen Chem 130. Uh, now, I should note here a couple things. First of all, if you're watching this video, there should be a packet associated with it. Um, I will be working off of this packet, so hopefully it was linked nearby. Um, additionally, as far as the material that I will be covering is concerned, I am steering away from strict definitions, um, so things like states of matter, or uh, whether something is a solution, or a mixture, or pure substance, things like that. Uh, I will not be talking about those, but they will certainly be on your exam. Also make sure that you are familiar with um, the different names for each uh, family in on the periodic table. That is also very important. I didn't really cover that here either. I focus more on the numbers uh, material, so um, significant figures, uh, dimensional analysis, got some specific uh, heat capacity stuff on there, things like that. Uh, that is more the direction I took. So. Uh, this is not in any way comprehensive. This is just to kind of bolster your understanding, give you a little bit more practice for the math-based concepts in your uh, Chem 130 class here. All right, give me a second. I'm going to throw some things up on the board and we can get started. Okay, so the first problem here tells us to determine how many significant figures we have in each of these numbers. Uh, so rules for significant figures, that's a very important thing. Uh, first thing we need to know is any digit that's not a zero is significant. So anything other than a zero is always, always, always significant. Uh, second of all, when we're talking about zeros, we have three rules we need to remember. So first rule is that leading zeros, leading zeros, so let's find some leading zeros in here. There's a couple right there. There's two right there. Leading zeros are never significant. So we can just cross those right out. Leading zeros are never significant. Um, let's see, zeros that are between two non-zero digits. So this one, for instance, is between two non-zero. Uh, nope, oh, here is another one that's between two non-zeros, and here we have four of them right in a row. If the zeros are between two non-zero digits, it is always significant, always. So we have a never, we have an always. Now you may be wondering, what's the third option? Here we have trailing zeros. Let me use a different color. Trailing zeros are only significant if there is a decimal. So for instance, right here, there's a decimal, therefore these two zeros are significant. I have a decimal right there. This trailing zero is significant. Check out this 800. No decimal. These are not significant. There's no decimal involved. They're not significant as trailing zeros. Finally, we have uh, these two right here. I have a decimal. It looks weird. It's at the end here. What does that mean? It just means that these two um, zeros are significant, where if we compare this 800, they're both 800. But this 800 doesn't have a decimal in it, therefore these zeros are not significant. That's a big deal. So let's go ahead and count them all up now. In this, uh, in this uh, letter A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this has 6 Significant digits, or significant figures, whatever. Um, one, two, here. We only have one in this 800, we only have one. This uh, middle zero is significant. We have three, here once again. We have three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Every piece of this is significant. There we go. So that solves problem number one. Erase the board, we'll get to problem number two. Give me a second. 